Yeah, um, Alibaba is essentially like Amazon, but with an even broader variety of goods that you can buy. And there's also a kind of system where they allow third-party retailers to sell their stuff on the platform. So you can get everything from cheap cables for your iPhone, for your um, Android handsets, right through to, I think it's even possible to buy land on Alibaba. Sure. And apparently there's an interesting payment system. Um, the, the payment's only released once, once the customer is, is happy, which sounds uh, very logical. It is, yes. And it's, it's especially logical in e-commerce and especially logical in a country as big as China. I mean, you're talking about a country with 650 million internet users. That's, com that's more than the next couple on the list combined, as far as I know. Uh, so you have to have as good a level of quality control as possible. Mm. All this started by an ex-teacher uh, in an apartment in, in 1999. Just, just tell us a bit about this um, enigmatic founder, Jack Ma, I think it is. Yeah, very, very interesting character, Jack Ma. He's, um, he was an English teacher, actually. So there's hope for English teachers out there. <laughs> um, but he's also so kind of led the company on a very singular, driven kind of way. Um, selling off bits and pieces of it when he needed to, but not too much stock. Retained quite a lot of controlling stock. Um, sold a bit off to Yahoo. Then Alibaba decided to buy back the portion of, Yahoo, portion of it that Yahoo controlled. Um, so it's kind of been Jack's vision for a long time to kind of build this multinational e-commerce superpower. And he's Towards the end of 2012, 2013, he kind of took a little bit of a step back, but he's still, he's still the central figure in the company mm. in much the same way as we think of, we still think of Bill Gates as a central figure in Microsoft. And, and I understand he wants to retain power um, with, with a number of, of directors on, on the board, so him and, and the clique around him uh, will control that. But first, let's look about the, the control of, of China itself. I mean, it has shown that it's, it's not afraid to, to shut down sites uh, to control uh, the, the web in certain ways. So is, is this very risky for investors? Well, it's interesting because... The, there are Chinese sites that have struggled on their IPOs. Um, some of the recent social plays, um, including one of the ones that Tencent owns, um, which NicePass has a direct, indirect stake, as a direct stake in, sorry. Um, they've battled in the US, mm. but we've seen companies that offer something and something which isn't likely to provide controversy in China do incredibly well in the US. So companies like search giant Baidu and um, even, even some of the video companies that are the equivalents of YouTube in China have managed to do quite well in the States. And we're seeing a lot of Chinese companies actually float themselves on the US stock markets because they're a little bit less risky than the Hong Kong stock market. Um, and that's because Western investors actually seem to have a bit more faith in the Chinese internet companies than some of the Chinese do themselves. <laughs> do, uh, do you think, think that's, investors that's will jump at this, Stuart? Is, is it going to be a massive uh, offering with, with a lot of takers and sustainable? Um, okay, so <laughs> the first one, I think, yes, I think there's, despite some jitters earlier this year, there's kind of a renewed appetite for emerging market stocks, especially in the tech sector. And even if there wasn't, Alibaba is such a massive, te successful tech story um, that it's proved that it's a worthwhile buy. Um, it's unlike Facebook, unlike a lot of unlike Twitter, for instance, and unlike any other kind of social media play that's floated on the stock market, it showed that it has some, it's, buying and, it's about buying and selling uh, rather than relying on advertising, for instance. So when you've got an e-commerce play like that, you've got a much more reliable, steady option mm. 
as an investor. Stuart, final question. You alluded to this. Our company, Naspas, has a direct investment in Tencent, which is a direct competitor to Alibaba. Uh, so what does this all mean for, for Tencent and for Naspas? Well, it could mean one of two things. It could mean people flood away from Tencent and Naspers because Alibaba is on a slightly more stable market. Um, or it could mean that there's kind of, if Alibaba performs well, then it could mean very good things for Tencent and Naspers because it could mean extra and renewed interest in those kind of Chinese internet stocks. All right, thank you so much for your analysis. Stuart Thomas from Meme Burn, and of course, uh, we'll, we'll build up towards that and bring you that offering when it happens. Uh, Alibaba on the New York Stock Exchange. Well, let's look at our own, the JSC, kicking the week off on a high note. After dipping last week, it's back on track to surpass perhaps recent record highs. Later, the Ultra Index adding three quarters of a percent. Woolworths added two and a half after that takeover was approved. It follows a strong statement from MassMart on Friday. And ShopRite also rising by 3% today after saying it expects a rise of at least 10% in annual turnover. Asla Metal was the best performer, adding a whopping 4%. Looking at the financials, the big banks were mixed, while beleaguered African Bank fell by 4.5%. The big resources stocks, Anglo and BHP, each adding more than 8%, but the gold and platinum miners are closing in the red. Goldfields and Harmony fell by more than 2% each. Amplats also down by more than 2% after it warned that its first year profits, uh, first half year profits rather, could all be but wiped out due to the recent strike in the mining sector. This weighing on the miners as well, the price of gold has fallen by more than 2%, the price of platinum by 1%. Oil prices buffeted by geopolitical tensions lately are steady for now. And the rand has firmed up a little, even though the NUMSA strike drags on. It last closed at 10 rand 70 to the dollar. It's now at 10.67. The currency market no doubt keenly awaiting the Reserve Bank's decision on interest rates later this week.